There they are at the starting gate. It's 9.30 in the morning. We are late T-Rex. One, two, three. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, and there's the clock. I don't think the Accurite is quite right. It says 33 degrees. It's running a little cold, and it may have to do with the post. I secured it to right there is the Accurite sensor, so that wood can still be colder than the air because of the chill we had over the last 48 hours. What a, a dizzying array of weather, eh? 36 degrees on this one, so it's about 35 degrees. And I don't have to talk loudly. There's no wind. <laughs> I've got my noise-canceling microphone on, and there's no noise to cancel. So let's just be calm and talk about this very interesting day. Every day is an interesting day. We've got multi-layered sky. We've got glassy Gulf of Weymouth water. And we have snow falling in parts All of right. New England. <laughs> Southern New Hampshire woke up to a coating. Weary Lundstedt said that it was kind of a freezing drizzle, a snizzle that turned into kind of some light snowflakes. Coating the cars in Bedford this morning. Thank you, Weir. The... Flakes at Jay Peak were huge for a minute around 8.15 this morning. The cam right there at the golf course. Look at the size of those snowflakes. Uh, so why is it snowing? Well, two different reasons. One, up at Jay Peak, it's a warm front. And two, at your place in Bedford and southern New Hampshire, I don't know. <laughs> Whenever I don't know why it's snowing, I call it upper level energy. Here is the radar for the Northeast, and you see some more flakes scattered around Connecticut and Massachusetts and that batch of snow that went across northern Vermont. So we have a warm front, and we have a cold front, and we have a very weak wave of low pressure. If we widen out and show the satellite image, uh, layers of clouds there covering most of New England and off to our south, a storm missed us to the south in the last 24 hours, casting a shadow there, that black line there south of New England, that is the uh, sun in the southern, southern sky uh, illuminating the top of the cloud. And then there's a, a much lower cloud just to the north of it. And that's where that shadow comes in. And in New England, uh, a gray sky, a gray day. We might see little bits of sun, but we also have uh, little bits of light rain or snow in southern New England and another batch of snow in northern New England this afternoon with a cold front. The national radar shows a lot of action with snow falling from Montana to looks like into Iowa now. And then there's that system or the Southern stream front stalled near the Gulf of Mexico. And the Northern stream and the Southern stream are staying separate for the foreseeable future. Uh, national advisories, watches and warnings. There are the winter storm warnings in the West and looks like Iowa has its own private winter storm warning. You've got Oklahoma covered in freezing fog. There's a freezing fog storm in Oklahoma this morning. And we have flood watches and warnings in effect on the coast of Oregon and Washington with a powerful storm coming in off the Pacific Ocean or even a continuation of the parade of storms. And those storms come across the country and how they get to the East Coast and what form is the huge challenge going forward. Remember what happened? Let's show this regional temperature roundup first. I want to talk about the temperatures this morning. Uh, we were Arctic cold 24 hours ago. It was a record low temperature with wind and chill. And now we have a uh, very light wind. And we had some radiational cooling before the cloud came in. The cold spot this morning, two degrees below zero in Bethel, Maine. Talk about great snowmaking weather. Sunday River, now all these uh, ski areas, tremendous snowmaking weather and Mother Nature adding to it also. And that was the cold spot. And you see a lot of 20s in southern New England and 30s in Boston. So the temperature was coming up last night. That's called warm air advection. And I want to just quickly show the thermal profile on Mount Washington. And you see the coldest weather was right down there in Pinkham Notch. What was it, about 6 degrees? Then you get up to about three, 4,000, 5,000 feet. We touched 17 degrees. And then you get back to the summit, and once again, it was in the single digits. So that's the warm layer that's moving in over the top of the inversion while it's still cold above that. So that's stability and instability on the same day. And that's why we have mostly cloudy skies and some scattered light precipitation today. I guess we can use the 
what was I going to show? Uh, what was I just talking about? Uh, the H triple R. I think I'll just show you quickly the short range guidance showing underdoing the snowflakes in southern New England today and central New England and a couple of raindrops possible uh, from Boston to the Nantucket stroll today, but nothing in significant and the ground is warming up quickly too. So I think we're going to have just damp roads and spots. Could be some patchy black ice until you get to northern New England with a snow shower or a snow squall there at the Canadian border this evening. That's a cold front pressing back south, but the front's not making it south of say, oh, Pittsburgh, New Hampshire or so. That front's going to stall and then there's going to be a wave of energy coming along that stalled front and then there's a more organized batch of snow coming in late tomorrow, tomorrow night. And that's the blue crossing mostly near the Canadian border. And that is another Arctic front. That Arctic front is going to press south. And we are all going to be windy and a harsh chill coming back at us on Monday for most of New England. Steve, what do you see there? Thanks for reminding me about the ice bucket. It's still solid. The ice bucket is solid. And so I, I let some water out of that because I wanted to be able look at that. Ugh, I can't even lift it. I can't lift it. Uh, I, I let some water out because it was so full and I wanted to be able to show you when it rains in the future or snows how many inches we're going to get. So it's a, a multi-purpose tool. It's the TK Weather Experience 2025 Ice, Snow, and Rain Bucket. You like that, Steve? <laughs> so 10 days ago, I posted this. It was Thanksgiving morning. I posted this on X, uh, the Canadian model for 10 days out, which is now today. And it showed a, a massive cold high pressure system across the middle of the nation and in southeastern Canada. And it showed a storm moving off Virginia. And I said, this is right out of the playbook how I thought winter was going to evolve uh, with the high pressures that were so prevalent over the summertime in southeastern Canada and these storms that were missing New England to the south and that front stalled from Florida to Norway. All right, that was the forecast for today from 10 days ago from the Canadian. And instead of having high pressure to our north today, we have low pressure to our north. And that is a huge difference. And that has to do with the timing differences with the northern stream and the southern stream. And I'm not going to use the Canadian today. I looked at the Canadian and the GFS, the American, and they looked OK. But we've been using the Euro for the last few days. And I like to call the play by play on not only the weather, but how the weather forecast changes. And uh, the Euro is what we're using for consistency purposes today. And we're going to start it off and show the 1 a.m. today weather map and 1 a.m. today uh, the system that dropped three to six inches of snow in Virginia yesterday missed us to the south so it did snow on the east coast yesterday that system is racing to the east now but instead of having high pressure to our north that's a low way up there you can't really see the L yet but you'll see it in a moment when I put it into motion over Hudson Bay so instead of having a a high pressure system in Ontario and Quebec we have a low pressure system and that makes all the difference you got to get the wind right to get the the forecast, right? And if we had a high up there, our wind would be from the east, but instead we have a low up there. So our wind is from the west, southwest. It's not that strong, fortunately. Now we put it into motion going forward. We're going to take it out 10 days today. And you see that L way to our north. And there's a front coming across Quebec. And that's the reason for some snow in far northern New England and southern New England. Call it upper level energy or a warm front with these little speck showers that don't even really show up. That front stalls now at the Canadian border tomorrow. And here comes another system. Uh, what was that winter storm in Iowa is diminishing rapidly because confluent flow aloft weakens systems. So that's a weak system or weakening system coming across New York into Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine tomorrow. Uh, but that is also going to reload Arctic air in southeastern Canada and push it into all of New England. Well, actually, very similar to yesterday. That Arctic front's going to come down to about northern Massachusetts on Monday with wind and chill, probably another three or four inches of snow in far northern New England. Places like Jay, of course, are going to come in with five to ten. Uh, breaking news, the tram is open at Jay, forgot to mention. And then it's going to uh, be the systems coming off the Pacific and mostly traveling across the northern states and coming right over New England. So they're missing uh, the south coast. And the next one comes in about Tuesday or so. And that one, again, uh, Tuesday night into Wednesday brings another little round of snow to northern New England. That's actually more of a warm front. And then later Wednesday, here comes a, a more powerful system. And that one also is going to go across 
uh, north of I-90, so that would be very little, if anything, maybe just a little rain or snow at the south coast, but another batch of widespread 5 to 10 inches of snow for northern New England, even into the valleys, and then that's going to be another push of colder air coming at us on Thursday and Friday. Looks like it could dry out a little bit. And then we are going to have a trough deepening, and that southern stream is going to try and lift north, and it looks like it almost tries to clip Cape Cod with some snow next Saturday. Here we go with that Saturday snow threat, uh, but instead it looks like that southern energy is mostly going to miss, and we're going to have a strong high pressure system and Arctic air plunging into the Great Lakes and the eastern United States again. And this now goes out to Monday, December 15th. And look at all those isobars, and it's snowing very close to Cape Cod right there. Ocean effect snow be offshore and very cold air with the thicknesses again down below 510. So that's another. Arctic air mass. That would be the third one in 10 days. A strong high pressure system sending that cold all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. That would be record cold for a vast area of the Midwest and New England again. And the ridge is really built out west with those storms coming in off the Pacific one after another. Now, eventually, those systems coming in in the Pacific way up there in southwestern Canada are going to push warmer air across most of the nation, including New England at some point. For the most part, all we see here is a continuation of below normal temperatures and above normal snowfall in northern New England and a fairly dry pattern for southern New England. But just as easily as we blew the forecast from 10 days ago for today with a, a non-phase, uh, it didn't phase, we could just as easily see in the 5 to 10 day going forward that we do get the northern stream and the southern stream to phase. So an error of the opposite magnitude and we end up with a surprise snow in southern New England. That is just as possible as everything missing off to the south. As we know, five to ten day forecasts are very unreliable. We just try and get the pattern, the general pattern. Now if it weren't for the full moon, that, see that, remember that Bass Rock I talk about? That There's the marker for Bass Rock, so he's on the other side of Bass Rock, but who would never take the boat through there if the was anything but high tide. So very high tide thanks to the moon being full this week, uh, waning gibbous cold moon. It's going to continue cold. The moon's going to shrink and come up later each day. All right, time for the end more. Yesterday's weather today, <laughs> T-Rex and I uh, walking around and uh, it was kind of a a busy day of trying to gather all the weather stats. You know, I, I document the weather not only with these videos, but also I write it down and I make uh, posts online, so expanding the, the brand, TK brand, and always getting contributions from our friends in northern New England. So it's going to be a mixture of TK, T-Rex, and our friends in northern New England and chasing the sunset here yesterday afternoon. It's called Yesterday's Weather Today and more. Look at this cat on a foot. T-Rex begging to go in for breakfast, and who can blame him? Hey, Steve, can you look at the camera? Please, please, please. Nope, can't do it. And more. And more. Frozen door. <laughs> 10 a.m. Friday. Fridays are good if you can get them. So just 12 hours ago, we were gusting 45 miles an hour. <laughs> the wood creaking. Wow. Arctic high pressure system centered right over Boston. Sinking air, calm air in the center of the high pressure system. What about the backside of these cold highs? Is it snowing out anywhere on our Saturday morning? Somewhere. It's always snowing somewhere. All right, Miss Monique. <laughs> it's 10:10 uh, biggest flakes so far. Quarter to a half inch. Like I said, I think it should stop at noon, but we'll see. 11 a.m. high tide. Look at that. Water coming up higher than it's come in some time. I haven't seen the water that high. Ducks that I'm trying to say are surf scouters. Where are they? They're so tiny I can't even see them. Right in there. I think I've seen a little bit of patchy ice floating around or slush or something, but it seems way too early for that. Another cute tugboat alert. Pulling a crane across the water. Cranes on the water. Ice. Is that slush? Are we going to get saltwater ice in December? 
We might. What kind of birds are those? 1.40 p.m. Look at that. That is not a rainbow. That's Lur, the Nordic god of snow, winking at us from over Jay Peak. Warm air advection clouds. Warm air, yeah. It's back up to plus 10 degrees. Focus, Tim. Inside, a work day. Yeah. Well, that day flew by. T-Rex taking us for a sunset walk. Yeah. And uh, we're on the subjects of dogs going for a walk. Rex, stop. Josh and Jen were up hiking in the back country today near Jay Peak. And their dog, Scooter, disappeared for two hours and then found him high up on the trail. Who lost who? Did you lose Scooter? Or did Scooter lose you? I don't know. But it's uncanny how dogs know their way back. Or up <laughs> to where they're supposed to be. T-Rex and I are gonna go check out the final minutes of sunshine, the clouds up in the sky, fairly thin, but produce this really cool thing there over Jay Peak today. That was so cool. And I can see him moving right along. The high thin clouds, warm air advection clouds. All right, Rex, stop, stop. Thank you. All right, go ahead. And stop. Stay. It's about as far south as the sun's gonna get. Oh, one more thing. Found some of the grapple from last night. And you go up on a hill and you can still see the sun. T-Rex on Great Hill. Of course, he's gonna lift his leg. Yeah, all right, there it is. Oh, it's so much warmer now. Not. <laughs> okay, on to Not In A Hurry Sunday. More snowflakes, more cold, another Arctic front by Monday. Over now, over. <laughs>